Hi folks, welcome back to the Tabletop's Edge. Today we have a short unboxing video for you of the latest game in the Battalion Combat series by MMP. And as you can see, that title is Arakur. Now, just to be clear, this is not the May 1940 British counterattack. Rather, this game covers the German counterattack in September of 1944 against the leading elements of Patton's Third Army, namely 4th Armored Division. As you can see, it's, the box cover is in the same style of the previous games in the series. The box itself comes in the one and a half inch depth, which tells you right away that this is a much smaller game than either Last Blitzkrieg or Panzer's Last Stand. We'll take a quick look at the back here. There's a nice uh, shot of a portion of the map. And what I'm more interested in is the scenarios you can see listed here. There are six scenarios that come in the game. The campaign scenario is 13 turns long, which actually compares pretty favorably to the other games previously released in the series, which tend to be around 16 to 20 turns in length. And then there are five other scenarios, four of which are four turns. Um, I'm sorry, uh, yes, four turns or less. This is a single map game with one counter sheet of uh, units and another of markers. So a smaller game in the series. I think this may actually be a nice introduction to the series for new players. And you can see here we have a, a little complexity scale here where they're rating the game as medium complexity and solitaire suitability of uh, medium to high. And I actually think that's, uh, I think that's pretty accurate. Uh, the BCS system is uh, pretty well suited to solitaire play. The only game in the system so far released that uh, can cause some issues for solitaire play is Panzer's Last Stand due to uh, one of the game specific rules in, uh, in that one. But without any further ado, let's rip the shrink on this and see what is inside the box. Inside the box, we have the standard MMP uh, inventory slip, and we also see one of the two D6s, the red die. I think I could feel the other white die in here. There it is. We've got our two six-sided dice. And then first off is the uh, game-specific rule book, and this looks to be... A total of 16 pages that includes this back page with a train effects chart. There are some notes in here as well. Uh, order of battle notes, got some photographs and illustrations. So the designer's notes start on page 11. It also contains the reinforcement chart and uh, the scenarios. So as far as the actual number of game specific rules go we are looking at uh, the first page we've got two uh, three and that's about it so three pages of rules which includes the victory conditions so not a bunch of special rules that you're going to have to deal with with this game which again i think uh, lends itself very well to an introductory game. You can see we have a set of charts here, full color charts. These are the version 2.0, so the same charts that we've had in the last uh, couple of releases, which is a good sign because it indicates that the rule system has been stable now. And a sheet of markers. Now this is interesting. These are actually, I don't know if you can see that, but these are 5 8 inch markers. These are bigger markers than in previous games in the series. So I'll grab, uh, I'll grab a marker, some uh, counters from uh, Last Blitzkrieg and uh, lay them out side by side here so we can get a, a better look at uh, just uh, how much bigger these uh, counters are. So you can see here we have the Germans on the left, the Americans on the right, and it uh, looks like a uh, free French group as well. Let's take a closer look and see just how different these markers are from games in the uh, earlier games in the series. 
I've zoomed in here on the uh, counter sheet for our core, and I've also got a uh, an infantry battalion counter from last Blitzkrieg. And just to set those next to one another, there you can see just how big a difference in size these uh, counters are for this game, which obviously is going to be a plus for. Uh, older eyes trying to read all of the information on them, but uh, they've gone, looks like they've gone from half inch to five ace for this particular release. So that's an interesting little change. And uh, as far as the rest of the counters, you can see uh, they do maintain the colored formation stripes that they introduced in uh, Panzer's Last Stand, which is helpful for identifying which units are part of which formation. Other than that, it looks like pretty standard stuff. The um, the Americans are represented. The formations get that glare out of the way. There, you can see the formations are actually uh, combat command sized formations. So we've got Fourth Armored Division, uh, one combat command of Sixth Armored, a couple of. Uh, Cavalry recon groups and the 35th and 79th Infantry Division. So a good sized uh, American force here, probably uh, call that what, a, at least a core sized uh, uh, force involved in the game. And I did want to point out if you look at uh, CCA of the 4th Armored up here, we have some action rating fives for the American units. On the German side, you can see we have uh, not quite as many formations, total of six formations here, but uh, of those we have two Panzer Divisions, 11th and 21st, along with a couple of the uh, new at the time Panzer Brigades, as well as a Panzer Grenadier Division and one Infantry Division. So uh, the Americans actually look to have a bit of a qualitative advantage in, uh, in this game. So that's something a little bit different that we don't really see much of. Um, I am very interested to see how this thing is going to play out. Now let's see uh, let's see what else we've got in the box. Continuing on in the box, we have next up the version 2.0 series rules, and again, this is the very very excellent rulebook that uh, is the version 2.0. You can see it is in full color throughout. It's on kind of a glossy uh, paper. This should be the exact same rulebook that we've seen in the last couple of games. This is one of the better rulebooks I have seen, uh, period. Uh, they really went back after uh, version 1.0. I think they listened to some feedback on that rulebook and uh, really have done an excellent job of making this rather unique and uh, innovative system a lot easier to understand. Next up, we have a turn record card here again in full color. We've got our weather, we've got the replacement charts down here, and a terrain key. Next up is the map. Looks to be the same art style as is standard for the series and much of the, uh, much of the gamers' lines of games from MMP. We'll take a closer look at this uh, all laid out here in a few minutes. And then next up, we have the second counter sheet, which is just your standard uh, system counters. We have our loss markers over here, some fatigue markers, uh, coordination artillery, and uh, prepared defense markers, and some traffic markers here on the back. We have a second set of uh, charts here. Again, this is a very well done play aid. Everything you need to pretty much play the entire game is right here laid out very well with references to the rule sections uh, that uh, the chart um, refers to. And then finally, we have the version 2.0 series support book. This is an excellent addition to the games they've been doing since they uh, uh, went to the version 2.0. There are a number of articles in here, including an excellent article of designer's notes by uh, Dean himself on the system, uh, the BCS system. He explains sort of the genesis of the system and how he got to, uh, how it came to be. 
uh, as it originally started out as a modification to uh, to the OCS series, or rather an attempt to address some of the issues that he has seen creep up in the OCS system, and then it has just sort of um, evolved into what I think is a rather different system entirely. And then there are some further articles that are really geared toward the uh, new player, um, and I do think will be a big help in uh, wrapping your head around this new this system if you are new to it. And then in the back we have some illustrated full color examples of play. Uh, there are some uh, flow charts here. Again, this is an excellent tool for the uh, for the new player and uh, a really nice addition to these games. I'm glad to see them continuing to include that. Now that we've seen what's in the box, again, it's a small game. You can see there's not a lot in there. Let's take a look at the map. Well, here we have the entire map layout for the game. And as you can see, it's composed of a single 22 by 34 inch map, a standard map sheet size. That makes this the smallest physical footprint of any of the games released in uh, BCS so far. Even Baptism by Fire, which is a very small game in terms of formations and counters, is still a two-map game. So if you are space challenged and you've been uh, holding off on trying BCS because you simply don't have the room for any of the games, this is your opportunity to dive in and try the system out um, by being able to play an entire campaign, a 13 turn campaign game on a single map sheet. Now, as we look at the, um, as we look at the map, it is a pretty attractive map. Uh, one of the major terrain features you can see here is the Marne Rhine Canal, which runs west to east. And that pretty much divides the battlefield into a northern half and southern half. We also have a couple of other rivers here on the that further subdivide the southern portion. We have the, the Murtha River and La Vazuz River running off to the southeast there. There are two cities on the map. We have uh, Luneville, which is the larger of the two cities here in the southern half of the map. And as we come up to the northern end of the map, you see we also have uh, Chateau Salon. And then in the middle here is the titular village of Aracour, and the red border there indicates that those locations are victory point hexes. So there are a total of three victory point hexes on this map. The player who controls each of those victory point hexes will receive one victory point per hex at the end of the game. And then you will also count up the number of uh, dead armor units that are in both dead piles the side which has lost fewer armor units will receive another victory point. So a grand total of four victory points are available and you need to claim three or more in order to get the victory. And the other result is a draw. So it looks like the map um, has some interesting possibilities to it. It does have the larger 5 8 inch hexes to accommodate the larger counters, which is nice as well. And I'm looking forward to uh, getting this one to the tabletop sometime. And given its size, I think this is going to be much easier to get uh, to the table than uh, maybe some of the other games in the series. Well, that's going to do it for our look at what's in the box of Aerocore, the latest game in the Battalion Combat series. And based on initial impressions, I'd say it's a very worthy addition to the BCS line. I think this will become the go-to game for introducing new players to the system. The small size of the game combined with a mere three pages of game-specific rules means that uh, it's going to be very new player friendly. But I also think the particular historical situation is uh, interesting enough that even veteran BCS players are going to uh, find this to be a fun game. And given the, the small size, there are a total of, I think, 10 allied formations versus six German formations. This is a game uh, that you're going to be able to play a lot of be simply because you can play it many times. It's not going to take that long to, uh, to play through these, these games. BCS is a fast playing game. And with a smaller game like this, that means that uh, you should be able to play even a 13-game 
a 13 turn campaign game in um, maybe a weekend, uh, maybe a couple of game sessions, particularly for experienced players. I can see this showing up at uh, conventions uh, frequently, uh, but I'm also glad to see this particular battle get some uh, get some coverage uh, I think it gets overlooked quite a bit not just in our hobby but also in the historical literature and that's largely due I think to the bigger more dramatic operation market garden that was occurring contemporaneously with this battle which is a bit of a shame because the American performance here was outstanding and uh, I think it's it's long overdue that it starts to get uh, more recognition out there so Looking forward to get this on the tabletop. I will be sure to let you know my impressions of the game once I actually uh, actually come to grips with it. But uh, at least for now, I think this is going to be uh, this is going to be an excellent game. Highly recommend you check it out. Thanks for watching today. Take care, and we'll see you next time.